from your from your shoulder down. Okay. First thing you want to do is you're going to apply pressure to wherever the wound is at. Right. That's the very first. If it stops, congratulations. Keep it there until medical attention arrives. If it doesn't stop, the tourniquets come in play. Okay. It's it's it, it looks it looks difficult. It looks weird. It's just it's a belt. That's what it is. Okay. And there's Velcro all around it. Right. So what you want to do is if you keep them in your desk. We, we recommend that you don't open it up all the way because in the event of, of a situation and you're under stress, it'll be very difficult to find that little hole and loop the, the belt around it. So just keep them, just keep them uh, in your desk. You know, you can keep them here, put a rubber band around them, and that's it. In case you need them, undo all the Velcro, open it up about this much. Uh, it'll, it'll fit around anybody's arm and anybody's leg, okay? So ideally you want to put it about two to three inches above the wound, correct? Like so. Let's say he has a wound right here, then the elbow gets on the way, so I'll just go above the elbow, all right? For us as law enforcement, uh, we're wearing long sleeve or we're under, under a lot of stress or uh, pressure, and we can't find the wound, we know we have something. We'll just go all the way high and tight, okay? So let's say he's wounded, grab it from your desk, open it up, and just apply. You're going to put it as tight as you can, the strap. You're going to go around, and where you have these two little hooks, don't hook it in yet, because you have this little pipe, the windlass, that every spin that you give it is going to get, make it even tighter. If you give it a second spin tighter, a third spin, until the blood flow stops. That's where we're going to get, stop the bleed. Once it's tight enough, you secure the windlass and these little hooks, and you bring the rest of the strap to hold it in place. And then this other white strap, you're going to bring it and holds everything in place and it will, the windows won't go anywhere because this is the one that's going to cause the tension, okay? You put the time, if you have a pen on you, for whenever paramedics arrive, they, they know how long it's been on there, okay? That's for their field, whatever they, how much blood you, you've lost or whatever. So it's, it's very basic, this is it. If you get a chance to, to hold one of them, take a look at it. Uh, as far as us, we carry them in our belts, same way. We have them folded, and then we these are these are folded a certain way to where we take them out, grab it from this loop right here, and with one hand, we're gonna stretch it out, put it on there, pull the rest out, and then the same thing as, as you guys. We're gonna secure it on here until the bleeding stops and I'm going to secure it okay. No big deal, it's just a nylon strap that's going to stop the bleed and hopefully uh, save someone's life. Why? Because like you like mentioned earlier, in the case of an emergency, it's not that we don't like you guys, it's not that we don't want to do anything for you guys. Our uh, highest priority is to go in there and stop the strap. If I see somebody down, I see them bleeding, I might just pass by and throw my tourniquet at them. That's why we want to train all of you guys to be prepared for any situation. If that doesn't work, or I'm, no, I'm sorry, not if it doesn't work. If the wounds are any, anywhere here in the bigger part of the body, then we're gonna go to wound packing, all right? Simulating that this is a wound, there's a hole somewhere in your body. Try to stop it. If it's big enough where it's not gonna stop, then we're going to resort to wound packing, right? Which is just basic packing the wound with gauze. If you don't have gauze, with a t-shirt. And it is what it is. You're just going to go at it. You're going to insert it as best as you can. If the hole's big enough to fit this in and more, you're going to go and you're going to start packing the wound. If this does not stop the bleed, then your finger. And we've got we've we've got mixed reactions with this in the past presentation. You're going to insert your finger in there and try to find where the bleed is coming from. Okay, wiggle it around there until you feel it. Usually, you're going to feel like you know the blood the blood starting out. Take it in there and stop, it. and you hold it in place until paramedics are. Okay, and just keep in mind that in a situation like that, maybe half a day the paramedics to get there. Like, like he mentioned, we're going to have to go room by room, clear room, make sure that everything's safe. Once we declare everything safe, then 
paramedics come. Hopefully the people that are in there have tourniquets. You have cords all over the place. Work the same way. Wrap it around your, your top of the wound, right here. And tighten it and you're gonna notice your, your blood go from. You get a pen in here and just this is a little, this is a little thick. Right? Get a pen in there and it's gonna act as your windlass. Oh. And just stick it in there. Uh, I don't know if your papers there have other examples. They use like a roll, a windows or rolled up uh, newspapers and a t-shirt. They use uh, phone cables, they use TV cables. And that's about it for, for the stop the bleed. So that's that's a, that's a, that's a goal. To stop the bleed and you're gonna do it any way you can. Uh, we have these plastic tie wraps, or what do we call these? So it'll work the same. And so, <coughs> This is basically just a very basic, very basic first aid on how to handle a, a, a bleeding situation using a tourniquet. Now, something totally different. Should somebody get shot in the groin area, right? Either one here. Um, could you come over and help me, please? And can you bring a chair? If you'll do me the favor and just sit. How much do you think I weigh? That's a good answer. I'm going to get you some. Do you look like? No. I weigh about 400 pounds. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> All right. So let's say that she's a, a victim of a, an active shooter situation. She did not get shot anywhere in the arm, the chest, or anything like that. But she got hurt right by the groin area. Okay. In the past, we had a, um, we had some people say, "Man, that, that's sick," or "How can you do that?" or whatever. But she's bleeding out, folks. Our arteries, main arteries, go into her body. But let's say her main artery has been hit or slashed. You need to talk to your coworker because it may be your coworker. She may be sitting down. She was stabbed, whatever, and she's in a lot of pain. What's your name? Maria. 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 So Maria's, Maria's my coworker, and, and, and she's bleeding. I said, hey, what, are you okay? She tells me, no, I've been stabbed right here by my groin area, and there's blood. I see blood coming out. She's going to go into shock real quick, or she's going to fade out on you real quick because she's been hurt in the main artery. And as the sergeant said, depending on where the injury is, that tourniquet may help you. But if it's in an area where that tourniquet cannot go, then I'm going to talk to her and I say, okay, Maria, look, I know you're in a lot of pain. I know you're hurting, but you're losing a lot of blood. And I'm going to help you. Okay, but it's going to hurt you. And I need to talk to her. I need to convince her. I need to let her know what I'm going to do is going to be to help her. She's going to be screaming. She's going to be hurting. She's going to be upset. She may be starting to fade out. When I'm going to be talking to her and I want you to look at me, look at my eyes, look at my eyes. I'm going to put my knee on your chest. I'm going to put my knee on your leg, okay? It's going to hurt you. And so I'm going to take my knee and I'm going to go ahead and put it right there. And I'm going to kneel down as much as I can. And it's going to hurt her. She's going to be screaming. But if I convince her and I tell her and I keep talking to her, okay? By the way, my breath stinks. I'm so sad. But you know what? I'm sorry. But this is the only way that I'm going to be able to help you. you got to be able to. So I'm going to help her. Now, do we take that pressure off? No, we do not take that pressure off, okay? I may be getting tired, but I'm going to stay there and I'm going to help her. If she's on the ground, it's the same thing, okay? The same thing. Let's go ahead and help her or help him. It might be me, right? And if she knows it's me, and oh my God, Castro's a diabetic, man. That's even worse, correct? I take Plavix. That's a, that's, that's a blood thinner. Worse! Right? So she's going to have to get on there and help me as much as she can. Or, like the sergeant said, get whatever I can. Guess what, Maria? I love this and it's now going to be mine. And she's going to stuff it down there in my wound. 
And she's going to keep stuffing and stuffing. And she might ask you, hey, I need something else, man. Help me. Give me your sweater. She's not going to take it off. It may be in bed with so much blood. Here comes another one. She's going to put it on there. Right? This is what we need to do to be able to help each other. Okay? Uh, thank you, by the way. Appreciate it. So you need to be prepared. Now, these tourniquets are very inexpensive. I strongly suggest you go to Amazon. I don't get paid by Amazon. I don't promote Amazon. They've even made uh, identity theft on me, so I really don't like them. But anyways, <laughs> they're very inexpensive. The sergeant bought, uh, I think, three for about 20 some dollars. Uh, you, you even listen, and I got three of these for 12 bucks. Okay. So if one of these cords will work, these not these are like a generic brand, but they'll work, right? They'll work. So not very inexpensive. Idea. Yeah, not a bad idea to keep one in your desk or yes. in your car. You know, if you're out in the park with your kids and anybody you have little kids, put it in the stroller and whatever in the little hole back. They were to cut themselves, they'll put on. And we prefer that you use something like this as opposed to one of the cables because the cables They'll work, but they're going to be painful, okay? These are very inexpensive. It is very important, let's say some of you who go hunting, fishing, uh, to the cabins with your family, or even at Walmart, you're shopping with your kids. Put it in your, in your bag. They don't weigh anything. Um, they come in a multitude of colors. The orange ones are normally training colors, but you can use that orange one. It'll work fantastic. Right? Um, why is there a white tag on there at the time? Because again, paramedics, medical doctors, when they read it, they'll say, okay, this was applied at 3.55 p.m. And remember when I told you this is a two-story building and it's gonna take a couple of hours? Guess what? You might have been the one attending my training and I saw you, I said, I, I recognize you. It's kinda like when we started the training, I said, I recognize you from somewhere. Oh, she was on my training. Here's my first aid tourniquet. Boom, I throw it at her. I guarantee you that the little that she, that, that she got right now, she retained it and she's gonna put it on there, okay? And maybe, so maybe she didn't put it on so tight. Here comes her friend and we'll check and tighten it up. And you write that time because it may be hours, folks, before medical services get to you, right? Here's the thing. You may go camping, you may go fishing, you may go hunting. Uh, tourniquets, they're, uh, what's the, uh, Cat5? These, these, well, this is generic for the ones we carry as a cat. Yeah. C-A-T. Yeah, it's, it's, it's basic, it's a short term for a combat application tourniquet. They're a little bit more durable, but these generic ones will do the same. And there's different kinds. There's some that have like an alligator metal mount. Don't get those. Get these. This is much easier to handle, okay? Uh, you can even make some of Velcro yourself, Velcro straps. You can make some, but this works perfect, and I guarantee you'll find them excessively cheap like he did. It's a lifesaver, I guarantee you. Uh, especially if you go home visits, throw one in your bag or in your car, folks. Keep an extra first aid kit, okay, in your uh, bag, a little small, little first aid kit, or in your car. That will work wonders, you know. Uh, Train yourself when you go home. Each one of you is going to get a test. The test is not hard. And while he's passing out the test, I want you to understand and remember one thing. There is no way you can ever identify an active shooter. You cannot. But what you can do is that you can prepare yourself for an active shooter situation. What to look for. How to possibly identify an individual who may have some type of a situation that requires continuous support, uh, maybe monitoring. Talk to your children, talk to your loved ones, talk to your family, and have a plan, a very simple plan. Don't make it difficult. Do not make it difficult. I've had instructors in the college tell me, hey chief, what if we make a plan? What if I do plan A, plan B, and, and what about green? What about yellow? No, 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 it's too complicated. Hey, meet Clara and a team. You are in a clean, we're in a team. I'm gonna meet with somebody, let's discuss it. You're gonna do a home visit. All right, let's discuss it, let us know where you're at. And take what you've learned and apply it with your family. 
talk with them, you train with them. Anybody need pens? I think the lady back there is selling them for $2.15. <laughs> It's, a, it's an open book test, so there shouldn't be any problems. Yeah, it, it's it's very easy. Uh, if you paid attention, you'll get it. <clears throat> take the cards that we gave it. We gave you. Take them with you. Share them with your family. Make copies. You're welcome to make copies of the cards. Uh, in the back, it shows you what to do in an active shooter situation. We've gone over a little bit, but my apologies. We do have some prices to give away at the end. We do do a, uh, a real quick uh, test uh, and ask for volunteers. 50 jumping jacks in less than five seconds. I'm just kidding. Nobody laughs at me. <laughs> And again, please go home and, and talk to your kids. Uh, talk to your brothers, your sisters, your spouses. Prepare yourselves. Uh, you can take some of these questions and you can even take pictures of them if you want to. And, and talk to your family about it. 